They have absolutely no evidence that mandatory e-learning is good for students. And in fact, the minister refers to Alabama as his model for this program, a state that comes 49th out of 50 American states in terms of quality of education. Why we would want to use our high school students as guinea pigs in this untried experiment makes no sense to me. Okay, and that comment from the president of the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation, Harvey Bischoff, on the Ford government's plan to increase uh, class sizes, that's specifically about mandatory e-learning. A lot to talk about. Joining me now is Education Minister Stephen Lecce. Good talks, morning. Good morning. Uh, talks breaking off yesterday. We know teachers are going to be off the job today mm -hmm. uh, for this one-day strike, this one-day walkout. What happened yesterday? Because in listening to the press conferences between yourself and Harvey Bischoff, right. it sounded like you were on completely separate planets when yeah. it came to you saying, I have a proposal here. They said, we have nothing in hand. Yeah, you know, yesterday we called on the mediator. Through the mediator, we called on OSS to have to bring forth a proposal to the government, an innovative option that helps keep kids in class. We have proposed numerous versions, uh, tabled and announced various versions of changes to our proposal. And each and every time we've done that, Melanie, they've been rejected. So we said, look, in the absence of supporting our options, bring forth your own within the frame that helps us achieve the offsets. And at the end of the day, the constant or the constant through this process is that irrespective of the options we propose in the reasonable uh, proposals we've made, the teachers unions have opted to strike today knowing that they had an option to bring forth proposals and more importantly knowing that they could have considered private mediation which is a mechanism to get a deal and I've urged them to do so and even, even still even still they're striking today knowing that there was an option there remains an option today in the context of where we go from here to get a deal we did this with QP and it worked well a couple things that are, would be very contradictory to if Harvey Bischoff were sitting here which we did ask him about this yesterday that proposal he said that didn't exist he said uh, that 200 days uh, that you said you were sitting at the table that didn't exist, that they put forth something a while ago. But when it really comes down to the bottom of it is that they're looking for a trail back on those cuts, those cuts that were initially introduced, and there's no movement that's happening there when it comes to class sizes, when it comes to e-learning, that there really isn't anything that's new here. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, we've announced on the classroom sizes a move from 28 to 25 of the provincial average. That's a substantive move. We announced a week and a half ago on online learning to go from four to two. We more than doubled the mental health budget. I mean, spending in education has doubled since 2004 to, 14, uh, to uh, 2014, more than doubled, well above the rate of inflation. And education teachers edu and educators in the province of Ontario are the second highest compensated in the nation. Now, we value their work and they, we want them to be well compensated. We want to retain talent. But in, the, in, a, in a world of finite resources, there's only so many tax dollars out there. I have to make a choice as Minister of Education. Where is the priority? And my priority is on kids. And we're offering a 1% a $750 million increase. And that is the one of the fundamental issues at the, at the bargaining table. And the fact is they've been clear that $1.5 billion is the red line for them. And I think if parents knew those facts, knowing that they're making on average $92,000, they'd want me to fight to put more money in the front of class. Mm -hmm. And now the, the, the ball is in the court of the union. And they have not opted to consider mediation to bring forth a new proposal. They haven't changed their proposal since they tabled that, their first one. That 1.5 minister, though, is, is something that they said that is just an unreal number. It is untrue. That 1.5. They say they're looking for cost of living, inflation. When you work it out, it's about a year be 200 million. It's not that 1.5 billion. He said, that, where is that number coming from? Uh, I'll explain in short. When you increase wages at that rate for one union, it essentially is matched by all the other unions. Across the sector of the course of those four years, it's a $1.5 billion net increase to the taxpayer. My mission is to get a deal, but it's to be reasonable to the taxpayer of this province. And I'd rather more money to go into front of class. We've more than doubled the mental health envelope. We've improved STEM. We've made a $200 million four-year math strategy. That's what parents want me to do. Look, I understand that the union leadership is going to fight for the benefits and salary of their members. I get it. But that's not my job. My job is to be fair. The entire public service we're offering 1%. Why is it the teachers, respectfully, or education workers, to the exclusion of all other, of other public servants, want more than that, which is 2%, roughly, and a $1.5 billion net increase? If this wasn't about money, when we proposed the exact same deal to education workers and OSSCF as we do with QP, they would have accepted it last week, but they rejected it. And why? Even the same job, same role, same job description, same municipality, same schools. And they opposed it because 1% was too little. And I think $1.5 billion is a lot. And I'd rather see more money go towards mental health resiliency or other areas of mutual priority that actually help our kids succeed. Let's get to the core. OSSTF says compensation is not at the core of the negotiations mm -hmm. for them. Uh, they say it's really about coming back to the cuts. Now, you talked about class sizes going 28. You came on down to 25 when it originally went 28 to 22. Why did it need to go down to 22? to begin with why did the four e-learnings need to come in to begin
begin with. He used this analogy saying it's like someone stole your bike and gave the bike back to you, but they shouldn't have stolen it in the first place. You know, look, I think when you look at where we've come from in the context of education spending, this year we're on track to increase spending in public education by $1.2 billion. We are now spending more in education than any government, any premier in the history of Ontario. That's a matter of fact. When you look from 20, 2004 to 2014, literally, education spending has doubled. We have 100,000 fewer uh, students in class and roughly 15,000 more teachers. I mean, parents, when they understand the data, and I think they do, appreciate that the trajectory is not sustainable for the viability of public education. I'm an unapologetic defender of it, but I'd rather do more of the announcements I made over the past weeks on anti-bullying, on strategies to deal with equity, on issues of math and increasing performances. That is where parents want me to focus on. Now, how we get to a voluntary settlement going forward is for the union to consider seriously private mediation. The fact that they've opted to strike today, knowing, Melanie, that there was an option before all the parties, any reasonable option that has been invoked just a month ago that worked, seems irresponsible. And I think parents, uh, to be quite frank, are frustrated, and I understand that frustration, mm -hmm. and I stand with them against escalation. I do not want to see more of this. I want to see the union turn to all the tools before they consider any further escalation that happens to the, each government, irrespective of the premier. And, and that's the frank, one constant. Minister, I'm hearing from a lot of parents who are siding with what's happening with the unions and saying, listen, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's the kids, it's the students. And they don't, no one wants to see this one-day strike. Right. This one, no one wants to see it, either side. And I think that's, we can all be in agreement for that one. Um, but let's talk about next steps because everyone wants to know that. Yes. Uh, we heard from Harvey Bischoff, OSSTF president, saying there are no other bargaining dates set in stone right now. Where do you stand with any of that? So we are, we stay with, we're at the mediation table in the sense that we're working through the mediator, the normal course of communications. We've been very clear. We want to continue the discussions with the OSSTF. We want them to stay at the table. We want them to cease from escalation because it's not helping us get a deal, nor is it particularly helping uh, everyday working families who are frustrated, particularly by the potential impacts for child care, which has a, a cost. So we are at the table. We've asked them to consider private mediation, which is another mechanism we hope will get to the deal that we want. We are op we have been consistently reasonable through the process. What has been constant is two things. One, they've made no substantive changes when they first tabled their first proposal. That doesn't seem reasonable. And the second is, irrespective of the premier of this province and the political party, they choose to escalate. From Bob Ray to Mike Harris to Kathleen Wynne, Dalton McGinty and Doug Ford, this is the constant. And my hope is we can take a breath, remind ourselves who we're here to fight for, which is our students, cease from escalation any further than today, Stay at the table, use mediation, let's get a deal. We literally had the same conversation ahead of CUPE. People felt that there wasn't a pathway to get mm -hmm. a deal, and we got a deal. And that's through private mediation. So let's say this. Let's stay at the table, both sides, be present. Uh, hopefully, when we rejoin again yes. in the coming days, weeks, we are a little bit closer or resolved. Uh, so again, no actual official bargaining dates just set. Uh, we'll have all the information that you need to know on our website, citynews.ca. Minister, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. All right, we're going downstairs to Dina and Devo.